let me start off by saying welcome. We are so glad you're here for another episode of the Nonprofit Show. It seems like I haven't had any coffee today, but I, I promise I have. I'm glad you're here, uh, Katie. Katie Cordell is going to share with us about board liaisons and sharing some secrets to our success. And Katie joins us from Boardable, and we're so thrilled to have, to have you with us. Before we jump into the conversation, we, of course, want to make sure that you know who we are. Julia Patrick is here, the CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, CEO of The Raven Group. Julie and I are both extremely blessed and honored to have the continued support and investment from our presenting sponsors. Thank you to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy, Nonprofit Nerd, your part-time controller, the Nonprofit Atlas, Nonprofit Thought Leader, as well as Staffing Boutique. These organizations are here to help you do more good. Yes, you, whoever's listening and watching, they're here to help you drive your mission forward. So please do check them out. And if you've missed any of our 504 episodes, because today, Katie, you are 505, uh, you can catch any of these episodes and elements of the episodes on Roku, YouTube, Fire TV, as well as Vimeo. And if you haven't heard the great news, we're also streaming on podcasts. So wherever you get your podcast, go ahead and queue up the nonprofit show and Julia and I will be in your ears and we hope that you like what you hear. <laughs> Thrilled to, to have these platforms and um, availability to you. And Katie, you will go into the queue with all of these. So we're excited to have you here, excited to have Boardable back in presentation. And Katie, you serve as the senior customer service manager at Boardable. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> Great question. I, it kind of depends on the day. <laughs> okay, okay, well, let's start there. Yes. <laughs> Typically, what that means is I work with a lot of nonprofit organizations. So I work with organizations that are coming to Boardable, looking to streamline their communications. They're looking to have a more engaged board, and they're looking to have better board meetings. So I work with um, a roster of our customers helping them to get onboarded with our platform, but also sharing tips and tricks about board management along the way. Wow. Okay. So Katie, you're my soul sister. Even though <laughs> yes. Not. Yes. Come to Indianapolis. Out. Have a spare bedroom. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the great careful. place. Be careful. <laughs> oh, you should never. You're booking the plane ticket now. <laughs> the plane ticket? Hell, I'm jumping in my car. That's more immediate. No, I think that... Um, we're really excited to have you on. You know, we talk about board liaison so mm -hmm. much um, on this show. Mm -hmm. And also we've spoken about this title, this issue, the structure, this concept as a way to make your organization flow better, to get more out of all the interactions that board members bring to the table. And so we're really excited about this. Now, if I recall correctly, and help me if, if, I, if I'm wrong, Jared, Stephen Shattuck told us about Boreable yes. because Boomerang is also based in, mm -hmm. uh, in Indianapolis. Our neighbors, and, yes. Yeah, and we were chit-chatting. Now, this is like, um, like going on three years ago. Mm -hmm. And we were complaining about something, probably boards or something. And he's like, well, they need this product called Boardable. <laughs> Isn't that true, Jared? Oh, yeah. Steven, Steven's been a great supporter, of course, with Bloomerang. And, um, you know, once we learned of this platform, especially Julia, oh my God. all over it. <laughs> it was like all over it. I mean, yeah. super all over it. So, so just briefly, before we start peppering you with all these questions, Boardable is a platform it's a subscription model, right? Yes, we primarily work with organizations. So we are a board portal. So that means you can log into our website, boardable.com. If you sign up with Boardable, you'll have a central location for all your documents, all your board communications between meetings and a way to have that historic record of anything that you've done. So if you're looking to onboard new members quickly, a board portal might be a good option for you. So in essence, let's say you are working with your board from board liaison, hopefully mm -hmm. to, to what, to CEO, whatever. And let's say you, prov you have minutes or you have mm -hmm. a CEO dashboard, any and all of these things, they're put on your platform platform yeah. so that then 
your board members can access them? Absolutely. It's the overall a, concept. Yes, you got it. You nailed it. It's a secure login. So you'll only be able to grant folks access who you actually want to have that access to log into your portal. Mm -hmm. Much more secure than email attachments, much more organized. If you're looking for um, past meeting minutes, if you're looking for new agendas for upcoming minutes or upcoming meetings, but then we also have resources to help you around collaboration tools. So if you are between meetings or maybe only meeting quarterly to, to keep your board members, committee members engaged. Wow. And I love so much the ability to hold that institutional knowledge and that transference of knowledge. That is so, so important. Yeah. Yes. And you're not spending valuable meeting time getting people caught up. They can go in if they're a night owl, you know, in the middle of the night without pestering their board liaison. That's true, yeah. We often talk about, about our, our cadence. I'm the early bird, yeah. she's the night owl. So between us, you have 24 hour support. <laughs> so I love that, that you built that in, honestly, because I think we do really need to pay attention to so many of our uh, board members, their time and their availability, right? Because what works for one person is not gonna be the same for the other. So really to have that availability on the system, um, is a, a huge win-win and a little bit of a no-brainer, right? Yeah. Like, perfect. Yes. I think that one thing that comes up in my role so often is you have nonprofit staff members who might be working a nine-to-five Monday through Friday um, role, but then their board members or their committee members, their key supporters, their volunteers. Like, I'm checking my board communication probably around 8 p.m. after I've had dinner and I've debriefed from the day. And that's not necessarily when someone's working. So having a board portal, having a place where you can know you can find that information, it's so critical for that ongoing support. Yeah. Well, let's dive that. in. Yeah, let's dive into uh, what are some of the responsibilities? And I'm going to have to keep Julia from talking, but would love <laughs> would love to hear from you. Like, the, what are the main responsibilities of the liaison, and and where is their place in the organization? Yeah, great question. I think a lot of people think that a board liaison might just be another type of officer for the board. And I'm here to say that is not the case. Most typically a board liaison is going to be a staff person or a non-voting board member. So they're going to be really responsible for preparing your board meetings, helping with some of those administrative tasks, whether that be scheduling or just keeping that ongoing record. Maybe you use a board management tool and you want to have a record of all your past communication. But I think one of the things that makes a board liaison so exciting is that they can really make or break your board member buy-in and that board engagement. If you have someone who's really well organized, it makes a difference for how your board is performing. Now, let me ask you this. Is this a paid position? And, and I really, you know, the question comes in a way if they're not staff, because I'm yeah. sure they're getting paid in a staff role. But if this is someone, as you said, you know, a non-voting board member, is this a paid opportunity? Yeah, I think um, most of the time when I'm working with a board liaison, it is an organization that has the resources to pay a staff person. Now, it not, might not be full-time responsibilities. It might just be a portion of their job, their, their role. But if, it's, if you're not in that position, I think you really need to be identifying if you have a key volunteer who has some of those skills around organization who could really be an asset in that board management or in those board communications. Right. That's a good question. You know, and this is going to be one of those things. It's really hard to answer, Katie, but you seem up to the task. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers oh crossed. God. You're like, oh my God, what, what, what is she going to ask? <laughs> what do you see is like that? You know, I agree with you. It's not a full-time position, mm -hmm. but what do you see as like a percent to total of somebody's job description yeah. or what does that look like? You know, I really think it depends on the complexity of the organization. We were talking a little bit earlier about organizations that have many committees. Maybe they have a board, but they also have a development committee. The board liaison role might expand beyond just the board. So you're also working with for various committees, your YP group, your young professionals, for example. And maybe in that case, it is a full-time responsibility, but you're split across those organizations. I've seen other places where maybe you're a member of the executive office, you're part of that administrative staff, 
And so the board governance, the board liaison, that's just a piece of your role, but it rolls in really nicely to your other duties. So now I have another question that you just brought, just made this come to light. Um, for organizations that do have really robust committees, mm -hmm. would a board portal be something that that can be used for as well, mm -hmm. even though it's, it's not traditionally the fiduciary role or whatever, but yeah. can that work in that, in that scope? Absolutely. One of the things that I hear is that organizations I work with, they have a really good structure for their board. You know, the board is built into the bylaws. We know what's happening at a board meeting. We have that run of show. The agenda's pretty much set from meeting to meeting. But then we have some committees where maybe it's less formal. Yeah. <laughs> so a board portal can be a really nice way to create that uniformity. And I always tell the folks that I work with, committees are a great way to vet future board members. If you have someone who's highly engaged in your finance committee, they're going to be a resource on your board. I agree. I just want I to agree. double down on that. <laughs> I think that's such a great opportunity. Um, it gives everyone the opportunity to kind of date and experience, mm. you know, the, the environment, what's asked of you, the expectations, the culture, things like that. Um, and I think it's a really good opportunity uh, to, to really do that. Who manages this board liaison? So we had mm. said, you know, typically it is a staff member that serves in this role, mm. but not always. So mm. who manages this, this person? Yeah, I think that can be a really delicate dance sometimes. <laughs> if it is someone. Like that alliteration, a delicate <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, I like that you called committees dating. I will be stealing that. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Uh, so with uh, managing the board liaison, if they're reporting to the executive director, but then they're also in that liaison role, that can be challenging, to be quite frank. It can be challenging because you have multiple bosses. <laughs> you're, um, you're, you're in that kind of center of the Venn, Venn diagram between staff, but also having that relationship with the board. So if you're a volunteer, it's much more clear. You report to the board, you report to the board chair. Um, so it's something you really need to be thinking about as you're structuring out this role in the organization. I, so I, I told I you, you, you have to wait. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. I told you, I was like- I know, you're all over this. Over this. Who trains this person? Like, mm. who gets yeah. this person ready? Oh, gosh. That is like the million dollar question right there. Yeah. <laughs> if you have someone who served in that role, I mean, obviously, shadow that person, have some sort of an onboarding with responsibility handoff. But oftentimes, it can be the board secretary if you're coming from more of that volunteer based organization to more of a formalized structure. They, there's a lot of overlap in some of those duties. And so you might have that board secretary show how you've historically taken meeting minutes or planned for your meetings, and then they can come on board lifting up some of those administrative tasks. So you have that continuity year after year. Okay, Julia, oh, your please, turn. Please, please, please <laughs> let me go because I have a big question. Um, have you ever seen a, an, in essence, a job description? for a board liaison that might, you know, help hmm. list out some of these things that would be yeah. maybe used in addition to the CEO's ad administrative assistant hmm. or something like that? Or is that just that? Somebody? I would say that there's kind of a gap in resources there. I think a board liaison role, especially if it's staff, you know, it's kind of being responsibilities that have been peeled off of other roles. Okay. And so we're kind of creating it sometimes. I don't have a great um, job description. If you do, I'd love to see it. <laughs> Come on. Sure. She might have to dust mm. that off. <laughs> I have a bunch for different clients that I've used, but, um, you know, it's, it's interesting because I, I, I was just curious because it mm -hmm. is, like you said, it seems like we're, we're still learning. It's, it's relatively new. And then we're trying to figure out, well, who's going to be doing what? Um, and so I, I just wanted to ask that question because it just seems so I guess because it is new, because it is new. You know? When when did this position come about? I know yesterday we had a guest on, we were talking about interim ex executive succession planning, and we had kind of talked about the origin story of that. Yeah. Do either of you know the origin story of a board liaison? I don't. I can't say, um, I can't say I have seen an uptick in it. 
and it's much older than pre-COVID, but in the past couple of years, it's become much more important because you have um, executive directors, you have CEOs, you have board chairs who are trying to run the conversation. They're trying to facilitate a meeting and they need that back-end support, which that board liaison role is so critical when you have folks typing in, emailing five minutes after the meeting starts saying, what's the Zoom link again? How do I log in? Yes. That board liaison can help with some of that meeting facilitation by taking off the the non-mission critical work off the shoulders of the board chair or CEO. That's true. Well, you both have homework because I'd like to know the origin story of this. <laughs> yeah, you'll you get, you'll get, get totally one. Delegate it to Julia. She'll be more than happy to do it. <laughs> that would be like fun free time for me. <laughs> it is. I know it's going to, it's going to be how she spends her weekend. Yes. Um, let's talk about uh, the power. So how much power does this person hold and, um, and what really exists in their role? Mm, I love this question. (laughs) This is a question I get, um, every week, every day, twice a day, all the time. I think, I think if you're in that board liaison role, like I mentioned earlier, you're kind of in between staff, but you're also in between the board and your, um, key stakeholders. So I think sometimes it can feel like I don't have any power. I, I uh, am stuck in this middle spot. And I, I disagree with that completely. I think the board liaison sets the tone for what your board meetings are going to be like and what it means to be a board member. Julia, you mentioned at the beginning that it can determine if someone even wants to join um, as a new board member. How organized are you? Is there a clear expectation around when things are going to be communicated? I know that I've joined organizations. I've been involved with committees where it became pretty clear pretty quickly that things were not super organized. (laughs) And honestly, no matter how much I love the mission of an organization, how passionate I am, if I don't know when our meetings are, if I don't know the materials I need to review, if I don't get those materials and in time to review them, it doesn't make me want to participate in the board. So setting those expectations early can really determine your level of engagement for your board members. It's fascinating. And I agree with you. I love the way you phrased that is that, you know, if you're in essence, if you're struggling just to manage Mm -hmm. the process, how can you be a strategic thinker and leader for an organization? You know, if you're not, if you're not armed with the materials and it kind of goes back to what you said, and I never had thought about this, Katie, that, you know, so many of our board members, they have all these other things that they do, and then they don't get to their mission work until after their day is done (laughs) eight o'clock at night or you know whatever the weekend it's it's really an interesting way to look at it yeah and i think that gets overlooked um katie and and julia if you can talk a little bit about how we've seen this board liaison role change over the last three years Mm -hmm. and i'm curious this is a a double-ended uh question here I'm curious if we've seen an uptick of, of remote board liaison. Mm. So, so really providing this as a professional service in this virtual space now. Yes. Short answer. Yes. To all of that. <laughs> okay. So we've, we've seen it increase. We've seen an uptick over these last couple of years. Um, and we've really seen this, this virtual space. Yeah. Um, Julia, I, what, what have you seen? Well, I've seen a lot of, now this is in my work, right? So this is different, obviously, than Katie's work, but I know where I've been asked to to speak all over the country about this, and that is, um, it's kind of come from the executive assistant Mm -hmm. saying, I'm frustrated, I've been tasked to do this work, and I observe what needs to go on, and it is more than just putting on a little luncheon. I mean, it, you know, sometimes it involves big time travel. I mean, especially if you're working with a national board and people come in and it is not just a super easy thing to do. And therefore it requires more tools, more education. And that seems to me where it's being driven, Jared. I mean, it's like, we need to help. How are we going to get to this point? And then once you kind of get that structure, it seems to me that part B is educating the board members on how to use this protocol, 
this, you know, technology, if you're, if you're using a board portal, you know, it's kind of a reintroduction to, uh, or an introduction, I should say, to a new way of operating as a board. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Like is. More. One of the things I've heard, and, um, and maybe Katie, you've heard this with some of your clients is, you know, the board says they want this portal and then they don't actually use it, oh. right? Let, let's yeah. just pull out that elephant that's been sitting in the room all day. Yeah. How do you address that issue? Because yeah. I've heard it many times. Absolutely. I always start with why. Why did you originally think that you wanted a board portal? Were you missing information? Was it getting lost in email? Were people not showing up to your meetings? Were they showing up, but they hadn't read the agenda, so they weren't prepared for those conversations. I always start with yes, the why. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not, not the boards you work with. I'm sure. <laughs> We're talking about other, other theoretical, made up boards. <laughs> um, yes, but I think really understanding why you wanted a board tool, and then trying to figure out what's not working. Is it a time commitment? People are afraid of the learning curve. And I think that's common. I work with a lot of volunteer board members and they say, I have a full-time job. I don't have time to learn a new platform. Yeah. And I totally agree. Like, I don't want to learn something that's going to be challenging or feel like a second job. We want something that's easy, intuitive. I just need to log in. It's going to work with my existing systems. Jared, to piggyback off an earlier question, the things that I've seen as far as trends over the past couple of years are we have more boards who are staying remote or maybe they're moving to hybrid? Mm -hmm. You know, the remote, we, I don't think folks were too sure about it to begin with. I wasn't quite sure how it was going to work, but now it's a way that we can keep people engaged, right? It's easier to call into a board meeting between soccer games than it is to drive down to the community center and be there in person. So you can engage more people in a more meaningful way and meet them where they're at. And I think those two things really help you determine what direction you need to take. No, I think Boardable oh, last year, maybe even longer, created a video component, a video yeah. portal. Is that right? Can you share about, sure. about that? Yeah. So um, speaking of video meetings, we have our own spotlight video, which is a video conferencing tool that's included in all of our plans. So if you're wanting to have multiple meetings happening at once, maybe you don't have a Zoom subscription or it's a little expensive, Portable's built that all in to our portal already. So all of your tools, all of your systems are already in the same place. So you don't have to learn multiple things. You just need to know the one thing. And guess what? We work with your email. So if you know how to email, you can use Portable. Oh, I know. So <laughs> So a lot of and the and the ladies sing. I mean, it just seems so great. <laughs> it's true. How long do you think it takes for an average board member um, to get comfortable with this? I mean, so so many of our boards they meet once a month, once a quarter, mm -hmm. and then you're like, oh my god, what was the process? I mean, <laughs> or what's my log? What's this is board again? Yeah. <laughs> what did I sign up to do? So how does that, like, how long, what is a realistic thing? And not just for your product, but, yeah. you know, for other products that might be along those lines mm -hmm. of a board pro portal, what do you think that we should plan on? Yeah, I, um, we have a really short onboarding period at Portable. So we um, recommend that most organizations, they can start using and start running really with Portable within 30 to 45 days. And that includes, you know, all the data input at the beginning, but then also part of that coaching and part of that training with your board members to get them excited about it as well. For a board member, I think you just need to go through a meeting. You just need to use it once to, for those light bulbs to go off and to click and say, oh, I see how this is going to work. And I can see the value pretty quickly there. And I would say the majority of our members are pretty tech savvy. I don't mm -hmm. want to say all, but I just, you know, I'm really saying that by way of technology advancements overall in the last two to three years. Um, you know, I also feel there's a lot of noise out there. I'm working with an organization that requires smart sheets, another one that mm -hmm. requires like, you know, Monday, which is a, um, like a, Oh God, a project management tool, right? And so there's all these different systems and platforms, but I, what I love about Boardable and especially with Bloomerang and probably other, you know, CRMs is 
that integration piece mm-hmm. that is so mm-hmm. critical. And when systems can talk to one another and it has this seamless integration, it really seems like a no brainer to use this to elevate your communication. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, um, I think that's the biggest asset is that portable works with the tools you already have in place. So it's not about retraining people. It's really about helping them maximize what you're already doing. Yeah. I love it. You know, it's, it's been so interesting to talk to you and, and I'm, you know, for those of you watching the show, you might be, you might wonder, you know, do we pre-meet or do we pre-book and all these things? And we don't, I mean, our guests that come on are really brave because they don't know us for the most part. And then we jump all over them. And we're, and in this case, we're like so excited and well, especially me. <laughs> so, you know, Katie, to Katie, let's, let's just put that out there. I know, awesome. I know. It's, but it really, honest to goodness, it's such an important um, mentality to have, to yeah. talk about this. And I think that, you know, the board liaison piece, um, it really reverberates across the organization. And I'm fascinated to tag this into committee work um, Mm -hmm. because I hadn't really thought of it this way, Mm -hmm. Katie, about how, you know, we, if you, if you really can go back out to your community Mm -hmm. and garner the talent and the time of experts to serve in, in, on a mission or a task force or something, what an incredible tool to have this up and running and going. Because I would imagine you get better buy-in. People are like conscientious of their time. And if it's if they're not being treated with that respect, it's easy to walk away or be disengaged, as we call it. It's that first impression. <laughs> it makes all the difference. Yeah, it's really, really interesting. Well, before we let you go, um, do you have any things that are coming all down the pike that you see as, you know, the board liaison um, professionalism is moving mm-hmm. forward. Can you give us some ideas of what you, what we might expect across the industry? I think we've touched on this briefly a little bit, but I am seeing this role being lifted up more and more in recent years. It's, I think I originally came to the understanding of a board liaison as being, you know, 15% of your role, 15% of your time was spent being an important liaison. And I think organizations are realizing that having someone dedicated to um, board standards, standardization, that onboarding, meeting, meeting prep can be so critical for keeping your board engaged, but then also for keeping your staff members connected to the board and what they're doing. So I, I have seen um, more recently, it moved to more of a full-time position, which is exciting and more into that committee space as well, which that's where my heart is. So I like that. That's great. That's Katie, has been fantastic. This conversation has been uh, so worthwhile. We are extremely grateful to have your voice back on and the representation of Fordable today. Uh, thank you, of course, to Julia and myself. Uh, that's me up there too. Um, but let's pull up Katie's contact because I, I feel that some people might want to check out Boardable at Boardable.com. Again, Katie is fantastic, extremely knowledgeable as the senior customer success manager. They're lucky to have you, Katie, and we are lucky to have you in some of your time today. Thank you. Thank you. This was a ton of fun. Yeah. Well, I hope you'll come back and get super nerdy with us again, because it's been, it's been a joy. And I know Julia is really going to miss you. (laughs) My new best friend. I know she's already, um, you know, uh, booking, booking her plane. Yes. Indiana's waiting for you. Yeah. I'm like, on down. (laughs) We've got to take this show to Indiana for, for sure. No, it's been great. And I, Honest to goodness, um, I I know that I get so hyper about this topic, but I really do believe in it. And so thank you for for not thinking that we're too crazy and to to enjoying this with us because it's been a lot of fun, Katie. Hey, we want to thank all of our presenting sponsors who are with us day in and day out. Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, the nonprofit nerd, fundraising academy, the nonprofit atlas, nonprofit thought leader, and staffing boutique. These are the companies that are with us every day. We are now in our third year of broadcasting, which is mind-blowing in itself. I think, Jared, you and I need a board liaison. 
we need something, maybe therapy, but a board liaison, we can start. Let's start there. I'm thinking that we need to do that. We could call them a show liaison. Yes. I love it. Katie, we're going to call you. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Well, this has been great. As we end every episode, we want to remind everyone, and I think, and ourselves and all those board liaisons out there, stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow, everyone.